Hey there, Bible Buddies. I've got another Bible review for you today. And this one is a very small, unassuming edition of the Bible. Um, but it's something very unique, something very uh, interesting, and something very rare and exquisite. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. Um, I'll, I'll let you... I don't know. I feel like I should let it speak for itself. Let me just... Let me see if it's... I've got a little something I can, I can sneak peek there for you. You see that? You see what that says right there? Yeah, you might be able to read it. What about over here? What about over here? Can you read that? So this, I'll go ahead and ruin the surprise now. <laughs> uh, so this is a 1901 uh, ASV by Thomas Nelson. Uh, so the ASV had two editions, the American Standard Version. There was a 1901, and then if I remember correctly, it was the 1929 uh, kind of revamp to the 1901. And uh, so Thomas Nelson did a ton of different editions of this. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty nice translation. If you guys haven't read it, certainly recommend it. Can't hurt, right? Never hurts to read the Bible. Um, but this specific edition is a sealskin edition. Uh, now we don't have very many sealskins. This is one of the few, um, the proud, the marine life, uh, <laughs> sealskins. Sorry. <laughs> I'm a dad, so there's going to be dad jokes on occasion, right? Um, so yeah, but it, you know, sealskin was pretty rare, uh, and they stopped making it. Oh man, somebody, somebody can certainly chime in in the comments down below. It was in the seventies. They outlawed, um, harvesting seals, um, uh, probably for the best. Cause I think about how cute seals are and come on, man, you're going to club a seal for a, for a Bible cover. Eh, I don't know. It's a nice leather. Don't get me wrong. Um, but they outlawed, uh, using seal skin commercially. So, um, yeah, so no more Bible covers after whatever that year was, uh, mid 1970s. Um, so these are pretty rare to find. Um, and they do feel very nice. Seal skin leather is very nice. It's very smooth. Um, it's fairly soft. You got to remember that the construction back then wasn't the same as it is now. So it's not going to be like as soft and flexible as we're, we're used to, but it's still a very nice leather. Uh, the only thing I will say is that uh, seal skin typically, for, is from what I've seen online and even here and about, uh, it's it's very delicate. So like this one is very fragile. I don't want to like move it too much, but it has it suffered some red rot because this is this came out in 1901. So the process that they used to use back then uh, for leathers wasn't quite peak performance. Um, so leathers from that era were susceptible to red rot, which is what this has. And they call it red rot because it kind of turns into kind of like a red. Let me see if I can open it here and you can see. Um, but you see how it's kind of turning red there? That's red rot. It kind of turns into like a red powder. Uh, and essentially the leather just rusts. It's kind of weird. It's it's I would equate it to like, like steel rusting. Uh, and it starts falling apart. Now this one's been treated, so it's not going to get worse than this. Um, but when it's left untreated, it will just continue to spread throughout the whole kind of... Usually it's here, wherever the high kind of high wear areas are. And then it usually spreads all the way up until the covers fall off. Um, sadly, but seal skin was very susceptible to that. Uh, and then also just in general, it's not a very durable leather. So most of the seal skin Bibles that I've seen have been torn and kind of in the same areas are very heavily abraded. Um, so they're all in pretty rough condition, sadly. Um, you know, on occasion you can find them in nicer condition, but people charge a lot for them because they know what they're worth. I've seen them going like full Bibles. Oh goodness. Uh, man, uh, I missed out on one, one time I could kick myself. It was an Oxford, uh, turquoise, I think. And it was, it was for like 30 bucks and I missed it by like two minutes. <laughs> I was so mad. Um, but yeah, like a, a nice condition Oxford turquoise really probably go for several hundred, maybe three or $400. I've seen them go as much as like $1,200. Um, just depending on the edition, how rare it is, if it has the app and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's, it's one of those things. Uh, I think mine I've all stumbled upon when they've been the seller hasn't really understood what they have, or I just get them kind of at a, in a fluke, you know, uh, I think it's something else and I end up getting it in a seal skin. And I'm, oh, no, neat. that's a nice surprise. Um, so I certainly haven't paid anywhere near that for mine. Uh, I'm a cheapskate. So <laughs> it is what it is. Let's go ahead and talk about the Bible now. <laughs> uh, one interesting thing about seal skin is they come in two different styles of leather. Uh, this one, which you can see is like a very kind of like large grain. It's very large and uniform. This is the one you're going to see the most often. Uh, then you also have more of a, I hate to say it, it's called a pin seal. Uh, and pin seal is, is baby seal. <laughs> I really hate to say that's horrible. Is baby seal skin. On occasion, you'll see pin seal leather. And pin seal leather is much, 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 much finer. Uh, it almost looks like a like a very fine grain, modern day goat skin. Uh, but it's a very fine, very smooth uh, leather pattern. And very soft from what I've heard. I don't think I have any, I don't think I have any pin seal um, leathers. Now, uh, word of warning uh, for the wise. Um, you will see sometimes label uh, Bibles labeled as pin seal Morocco. That is not pin seal. Morocco is goat skin. So that is a goat skin that has the same um, kind of grain pattern as pin seal does. So it's like a stamped grain pattern to mimic pin seal, but it's actually goat skin. So if you ever see a Bible that's stamped pin seal goat skin and they're like, oh, it's seal skin. It's, we have to charge you $1,000 for it. Say, ah, that's goat skin. 
right? It's just, you know, that's how they labeled it back then. So just a heads up. Uh, now for this edition, it definitely has a yap. Uh, yeah, really close to a full yap, <laughs> given how thin it is. It doesn't take much, um, but it does have a nice little perimeter line there. That wonderful, that wonderful leather grain. I love that. It looks so cool. It's such a unique leather. On the spine, we have New Testament Psalms and then American Standard Version and Nelson. And there are just some rib indications there. One, two, three, four of them. And you have the uh, kind of the, the whatever <laughs> perimeter line continuing uh, on the on the side and on the back there. And look at that wonderful grain. Oh, it's such a nice grain. Yeah. And then, you know, the red rock corners. You have to be very careful because, like, oh, you can see how flimsy it is. I don't want to mess around with it too much. It'll probably eventually end up, like, cutting across and tearing off and breaking off. It's usually what happens. Uh, I treated the mess out of this one, I remember. Um, just because I was really afraid of that happening, but it's probably still going to happen. And you can kind of see some like little flecks of the leather kind of coming off here and there. Uh, it just is what it is, unfortunately. When we open it up, it does have a very nice, very soft uh, leather liner here. You can see the kind of corner construction there. Maybe the camera can pick it up. Really need to get a better camera. Maybe one of these days. But it is edge line construction. And you can see where the tab kind of comes up here onto the block. Go back to the front or there. And this leather's uh, pretty has gotten pretty softened as well, so it's probably that same, probably just the reverse side of that seal skin. Uh, I can't really tell. I'm not sure on this construction. It almost feels like there's a maybe like a small yeah, that's what it looks like. It's like there's a small tab of leather here connecting the two. So I don't know if you consider that edge lined differently done, I guess. And this and camera it almost looks navy blue. I'm getting distracted. Uh, down here it says India paper and then uh, seal skin and silk silk sewed. It looks like. So this is like top of the line. Uh, this, these are going to be all kind of all of your best features all around. India paper, obviously, is going to be the most opaque paper that you can possibly get. Seal skin is going to be the top tier. I mean, absolute top tier quality leather that you can get from this era. Uh, and then silk sewn. Um, they don't even do that anymore. So um, silk has a very high tensile strength. If you guys aren't aware, tensile strength is like the strength when you pull. Like, say, if you have like a string of silk and you pull it, it's got a very high tensile strength. Uh, which would be perfect for book binding, obviously, because this binding is going to constantly come under wear and tear as you're pulling and, you know, turning the pages. So they used to use silk in the older editions. They switched now over to nylon, and I would imagine that's a cost-saving measure. Um, but yeah, this is top tier, right? Um, assuming there's uh, overcast stitching, which I'm not sure, that would, like, put it at the very top tier. <laughs> now we do have black paper, uh, kind of a matte paper. I'm not sure if it used to be a beetle paper. Uh, it just looks like matte paper, probably not like a beetle paper. If you guys haven't seen beetle paper, it's kind of cool. It almost feels like a felt paper. Um, some nicer editions had that, but we'll go ahead and get into it. I'll try and be very delicate with it. You can see there where I, I made a little repair. I don't know if the camera's picking up. That's that archival tape. Uh, so whenever I go through these Bibles, uh, you know, I clean them and do everything I need to. And then if there's any kind of tears or, or things like that, I try and repair it with archival archival tape that'll hold up over the years. Uh, and there's kind of a thick sheet here. And then you have your New Testament title page. I guess this is just the, the title page, but it's kind of a New Testament title page. Then this is kind of the, I don't know, maybe the official New Testament title page. <laughs> we'll go with that. And then on the reverse side, we have our copyright information. And you'll see there, there's the information about the edition. So normally the ASV, so ASV is kind of weird because it doesn't call it the ASV. They don't call it like the American Standard Version. Um... Yeah, if you notice, they don't they don't just come right out and say, like, American Standard Version. So the wording is kind of weird on it. You usually see it right there on the back. It says American Standard Edition of the Revised Bible. So I guess they worked from the RV, the Revised Edition of 18... Oh, 1881, I think it is. Uh, don't quote me on that. Um, but they came out with the 1901 edition, and then, like, if this is a, um, a 1929, you just see 1929 after the comma there. So let's see, you know, this is a 1901. There's your preface. Let me get in frame. Kind of scoot it up a little too far. Let me, let me scoot back here. There we go. We have a few pages of the preface. And then I was going to say the first book of Moses called Genesis, because I'm so used to saying it. So that is not the case in this edition. Then you have a blank page in between the preface. Now on the reverse side of that, you have the table of contents there. And then you have the gospel according to Matthew. Now this is obviously a pocket edition. It's very small. Um, but the text is actually pretty large, all things considered. So a very nice addition. All right, let's go through some of the features here. Uh, so the ASV is kind of weird in the way it handles things. So you have the book name on the top center. Then you have the starting chapter and verse on the left side of the page, the ending chapter and verse on the right side of the page. 
your footnotes, if you can see them all the way down there. Your footnotes are down there on the right side, the bottom right side of every page. Uh, and it looks like they might even put some on the bottom left as well, because I see some down here. So kind of a mix. I'm not sure if it, maybe they put up just based on the column, like if these footnotes apply to this column. Maybe. Don't quote me on it. Uh, and then they do have a running header up at the top of the page there. So you have, oh, I hope you guys can see it. It says, uh, Jesus comes to fulfill the law and the prophets. And then of enmity. So I'm assuming maybe this applies to the second column. Because there's a little bit of a break there, a little bit of a gap. But let's keep going. Kind of flip through it. Uh, and the ASV typically is a double column paragraph. Was that even in frame? <laughs> I hope so. There's your, there's your writing headers. <laughs> uh, across the top. Uh, the ASV is a double column paragraph. It's very well done. The one thing I've noticed with the ASV text texts that I've had for the most part is the letting is very tight. So the letting is the spacing between the lines, um, and you can see it's it's pretty tight in here. So they don't they don't get much room to breathe, and that might have just been the older style of doing it to try and cut down on costs and that sort of thing. Uh, one thing I do particularly love about the ASV is the number two. <laughs> I always love it in the ASV for some reason. The number two they use is very pretty. Um, but yeah, that's <laughs> sidetracked. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Double column paragraph. You have these beautiful drop caps, double line drop caps for the numerals. Page numbers in the bottom center. They are not economizing, it doesn't appear. So at the beginning, uh, each book begins on a new page instead of you know moving it to the end of the last book. Let's flip through it a little bit. I think I forgot to point it out, but there are white head and tail bands. And then you do have one measly, we'll go back in the inside in a second, but one very measly, Ooh, look at that. Uh, I don't even know. These are like the worst ribbons that have ever been produced ever in the history of Bible making. Uh, very thin, very narrow, like purple fabric. And I, I've dealt with these enough to know that if, if you tug on it ever so slightly too hard, it's just going to pop right off. Uh, so very fragile ribbons. I do, I do not like those. Goodness. I wonder if at any point in their history they were ever, uh, ever decent. The world may never know. Uh, but yeah, back into it. Uh, you can see that beautiful page Ed gilt. I mean, it's just... This is a pocket edition, right? This is a pocket edition. Look how nice it looks, right? You got the gold, and it opens. You got that nice red, and you got the nice cream-colored Oxford paper there. And you can see, obviously, this paper is going to be like really thin. I mean, this is very thin paper, so you're going to have a little bit of show through. But for the most part, right, you're not going to see anything coming through because of the line matching. There's just no way. So we'll go ahead and get to the end of it. I would imagine there's not going to be much other than the songs. There we have the end of Revelation, and then Psalms title page, and then your copyright information for the Psalms, and then it gets right into the Psalms there. And you do have poet poetic formatting, which is nice to see, especially in these older translations. You know, sometimes they, they skimped on that. I mean, I should hold it up for you guys, right? It's hard to see enough as it is. <laughs> there, it magically became a full-size Bible. <laughs> All right, and as we get through the Psalms, towards the end, or to the end, so there's 149. Sorry, I had to drop the Bible on you both hands for this. And there's 150, and it does have overcast stitching on the back there. You have one blank sheet of thin Bible paper, and then you have um, a couple of thicker sheets there. Just some non-bible paper but thicker sheets and then you have the model number which is uh 397x it looks like and then the end of the bible so very small very diminutive excellent edition beautiful edition go ahead and get the measurements for you guys uh, this comes in at five and an eighth inches tall by three and three quarters inch wide by ooh, well under an inch uh like three quarters of an inch thick yeah, like three quarters of an inch thick. So, uh, excellent size. Very, very petite. Let's take a look at the font comparison. Hopefully it won't let us down here. We'll look at the NN now, verse 25. Sorry, gotta put it down. Apologies. Mm. It appears to be like a seven and a half point font versus Times New Roman for the uppercase. And for the lowercase... It's about an eight point font versus Times New Roman. Uh, so really uh, great size font. Eight point font is excellent for a, a pocket size edition. I mean, you can't really ask for too much more. I mean, I guess you, you could ask for a 10 point, but it'd get chunkier. 
Uh, but yeah, excellent edition, very trim, very sleek, very spelt. Uh, if you guys ever see, so uh, I'll tell you the giveaway for me, right? Whenever I see these Bibles on eBay, uh, I'll know a seller doesn't know what they have. If they have the Bible listed for like 30 bucks and you see this, um, this sort of grain pattern, that's a, that's like a, an easy giveaway. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think, I think I've run across like one or two that have like a simulated pattern like this. Um, but it's, it's pretty rare. More often than not, the ones that I bought that have this, this particular grain pattern, they end up being sealskin. Uh, or at the very least, unmarked. I think I have a, a, a Thompson a Thompson chain that's unmarked, but it looks just like this, and it feels just like this. So I'm like, I'm wondering if they did a sealskin edition. Um, so certainly, if you guys see this, and you know the Bible's like ten or fifteen bucks, I would say just go for it and snack it, snack it, snack it, snag it, because <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. You might get a sealskin edition, and it might just be absolutely stunning and beautiful. Look, there it goes. My finger just rubbed against it. Oh, this poor thing's falling apart. Uh, all right, Bible buddies, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know what to do. Until next time, Bible buddies. Bye.